based on the thumbnail photo that you guys saw today. Fully explain for beginners, step-by-step -step techniques, color mixing, everything. To help me do that is my husband, John. Hello. He's going to make sure that you guys can see all of the brushwork, all of the color mixes. We have several robotic cameras that will zoom in and make sure that you're in the action. Because I find, and I know what, I know John finds, we find that for you guys at home, if you can see what I'm doing, you can much easier duplicate what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, happy Saturday. If you're here on Saturday for the live stream or happy whatever day you're joining us. I'm just so glad to see everybody. Thank you for showing up today and, and spending some time with us. It should be a very fun show. Mm -hmm. And I think you guys are going to learn a lot in this class. We're going to cover so many techniques, essential things that every beginner needs to know about painting flowers. We're going to cover how to make things faded into the background, how to lighten and darken red, which I know is a challenge for everybody, mm -hmm. um, and some other little fun special Sherpa-isms as we go along the way. Everybody, if you've got your, your coffee or your tea or whatever your sippy sippy is today, mm. that, of course, is in honor of Grey Bear Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Once was and always will be. Oh, I'm so ready for today. 16 by 20 canvas day is my favorite day. Is it? It is. And I'm also ready to sort of relax today. I am too. Just chill out. We've had kind of a week. Uh, we have a 16 by 20 surface. Before we get into step one, which we will timestamp the steps, the chapters, those will be put in after the show. And that way you can find your place again easily along the video. And you can know what we're covering in each step. Also, it will match the mini book, which will finish up as quickly as we can and put on the website after so you have a step-by-step -step written out explanation of what we're doing. 16 by 20 surface. I like to put wishes and intentions on my surface. That's good for me. You can do this or not do this as you see fit. Uh, on a very uh, self-serving wish, <laughs> very much wishing for another viral video to blow up soon. And the reason I always wish for these is because they do a lot of the heavy lifting on the channel for me when this video goes viral and then I can spend more time with my community, you guys doing weird projects that I like to do. Yeah. Uh, vaccines for those who need and want them. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling anyone to do anything. I'm just saying if you're looking for a vaccine, I know my mother is, she's going through a lot. Vaccines for, need, for those who need and want them. And then this is very uh, personal and real and I think it's just globally a big thing is relief from anxiety or depression. And also, no more stigma or fear around mental illness. So, you know, if a person is suffering from mental illness, they should never be made to feel bad about that. That's, mm -mm. you know, you don't shame people for having a cold or catching a virus. You don't shame people for, you know, going through something medically. And mental illness is a medical journey, not a journey of willpower. So, <laughs> you know, I think that's important to keep in mind. I know in my life I have... Just in case you're sitting at home, and I'll just say this to you, and maybe this will help you say this to yourself of going through it. My, my life on and off, because I have Hashimoto's, which is a thyroid condition, I suffer from depression. Mm -hmm. It comes and it goes. I manage it uh, with the help of a doctor and therapist when needed and medication when needed. And I'm not ashamed of it. It's just, it's like my Hashimoto's. It's just something that I treat and take care of. And it's not uncommon. I'm saying this to you as a beginning art teacher because many people start painting to address how they feel. Mm -hmm. so there's there's that psa public Sher sherpa announcement <laughs> <laughs> to start out these are not all the colors we're using today um you'll see the color list and material list in the description below but today we're starting out with phthalo blue phthalo green burnt sienna cad yellow medium and titanium white uh, this is a wet palette and that's going to help me keep my paint moist through the painting process it's listed the exact one i have is listed in the description below i have two new listings down there um, I have the one to Amazon that if you're not a fan of Amazon, I did a teacher's list on Dick Blick, which is not an affiliate in any way, but it just lets you find products that I like. You don't have to buy every product in the list. They're just things that I like that you might like too. Um, or that I use on the show. Hmm. Very low pressure. Can I, if the pressure is here, can I just drop it two more? <laughs> this is no <laughs> pressure. It's just convenience. John. Yes. Let's have a great painting day today. All right. Let's breathe in our creativity. And breathe out our worry and our stress. Breathe in our creativity. And breathe out our problems because this is our time in our studios. Yeah. Ah, it's going to be a good day today. Let's throw up step one, the red hibiscus. Okay. 
Step one, I'm going to get a big brush. Doesn't really matter what big brush you get. I'm going to need to just put a basic layer of paint all over the surface. Um, I'm going to use this boy. This is an Art Sherpa number 30. It's just a big brush. Um, it's a little pricey to invest in when you're starting out. So that's why I say, hey, it's just a big brush. Because you guys, uh, it's great to have tools. And as a teacher, I'll always tell you about tools. But it's also important to remember that the painting is in you, not the tools. I'm going to take a little of my phthalo blue and the smidge of my phthalo green together and some white. And we're going to begin by just painting the whole surface with a little bit of blue. Mm -hmm. We need kind of a layer here to start out with. And then we're going to kind of bring in our value. You can see right away if you're on a 16 by 20. And when I used to teach in painting parties, it's so funny because they would give students like a brush like this size. And <laughs> let me show you. It takes a minute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I used to have to like plan for about 40 minutes of a solid background. So, <laughs> you know, that's why I use a big brush because I do a lot of talking, um, as sometimes people like to point out to me. And um, <laughs> because I do a lot of talking, I try to do things like use a larger size brush and talk to you about those reasons why. Down at the bottom, I'm going to use a lot more white yeah, because it's much lighter. I want to make sure I get a nice light value. If we're going to want this red flower to really pop, we've got to really kind of give it a background. Yeah, get this background in beautifully. That makes sense. You know, and it's okay to work a little bit at your background. Background is the beginning, right? Put those first foundational steps in. It's, it's the base upon you will, which you will build. It's the base upon which you will build. I'm going to get an old tube. This is an older big tube. It is, I have to use up the paint, so I'm going to use up the paint from my older big tube. <laughs> Sometimes I do that where I'm like, oh, i got to use up some paint. Because it's time to get into the fresh. So, yeah, you do want this blue sky to be kind of a lighter value. Sometimes when I use a big brush, it can take up a lot of space on my palette. So that's just a thing to factor in. I'm not too worried about creating like completely smooth uh, application of paint because we're going to be doing all of these little wonderful leaves in the background. Mm -hmm. So it's not as big of a deal to make this perfect. So the brush strokes are okay. Brush strokes are okay at this stage. You wouldn't want them... To be disruptive, you would want your surface to be covered, but you can have a little brushwork. Nobody's going to mind. If I need to put a little more out there, I can just get a little more water in my brush. You can see I can work this in. Just lightening that value, finding that light blue sky day. Mm -hmm. This is my favorite, just one of my favorite blues to do, which is the phthalo blue, phthalo green mix. If you mix the 400 colors with me, you might have figured that out by now. You'd be like, oh, yeah, I did the color mixing videos, both of them. I think we need to give a badge or a shirt. Like, I did all her crazy color mixing yeah. videos, and I lived. <laughs> I need a shirt. Be a good shirt. Be a good shirt. To think about that. All right. <sighs> evaluation this is where i look at my surface and make sure that it's, what i'm getting is what i'm wanting it's sky like it's sky like it's light it will allow the contrast of the green leaves to really pop no patterning yeah i'm trying to remove patterning i don't want to have an obvious anything that pulls my eye so it's not so much blended you know as worked out and there really is a space between that because sometimes we work very hard to uh, hide the brush strokes in our canvas. And sometimes we're not so much hiding the brush strokes as we're trying to not make patterns 
that pull our eye into things. Like if you were to make a lot of little choppy brush strokes, that would really be uh, significant visually. Mm-hmm. And it would draw your attention and it would impact the overall piece, right? Because it would be such a, it was a, it's a pattern in your eyes. I love pattern. See the pattern on my shirt? You love the pattern on my shirt, don't you? You're like, pattern, pattern, pattern. You, you, your eyes look for pattern. Your brain looks for patterns. It's a survival mechanism. Super useful when we need it. <laughs> Everyone's commenting on how, how wonderful you look today. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very, very, very much. All right. I'm going to wipe my brush off on my face. What a good place to wipe your brush. Yes, I really, honestly, sometimes it's like a little bit therapeutic for me to wipe the brush on my face. Be like, ha, 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 take that, me. <laughs> weird things that we do is, we're such strange things, aren't we, human beings? Some, some of us more than others. Some of us more than others. All right, let's call this uh, step one and put up a step two. We'll get a photograph of this for the step-by-step step book. We want a bigger one. Yeah, big I mean, step two. It's a big step two. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a little step two. It's a big step two. We're not two. doing an ATC, sir. We're doing a 16 by 20 canvas. It's a full size deal. I'll step forward so John can get to the canvas. He wants me to grab it for him, but I didn't. I'm making, so I'm making Stun Hands show because Stun Hands now has his own shirt in the Teespring store. <laughs> <laughs> so we have two stores. There's a one on our website that carries our soap, our brushes, events, and stuff. But I also have a Teespring store because YouTube says we should have one of those, and it puts them in the bottom. But I do all my own designs, and I took your suggestions. And so there's a Like You Do cup now, finally, and shirt and hoodie. And there is a uh, Under Pressure Brush Pressure, talking about the Goldilocks zone where it's too much brush pressure and just write brush pressure. It's kind of funny. If you watch my show, it makes no sense if you don't. Like just walking around with that, people will be like, I don't, I don't get your shirt. <laughs> and then um, I have a stunt hand shirt as well, which is a stunt hands. It's not just a job, it's an adventure. And then I did a um, acrylic April day one. The hashtag goals is to do all 30s individual things. They won't be up forever, but we'll put them up for a little bit. And then if, if, if you're like me, I'm the kind of person who would, I keep wanting to get out of your way collect all the things i'm a collect all the things person i would definitely like i would have 30 cups as me so nobody's expected to it's just there just in case you are weird like me there we go there's my public service announcement for myself shameless self-promotion shonda sent an awesome sticker that says you're number one with your even the cool pink hair it's oh, like, it's thank a, you it's a sherpa sticker thank you for the support i really appreciate it so we have this little background. No, it's fuzzy, fuzzy little background. We're not going to grid or add our traceable yet. We want to get our distant background objects in before we put in our traceable or our grid. I'm going to demo the simple grid. Mm. Either will be, I'll let you guys know when you want to do that. I am, however, going to grab a round brush that's a little bit scruffy. Mm. Okay. And I'll get this one. This is a Silverstone number 12 round. Here's what you need to know. It's a number 12 round. It is hog bristles. It comes to a gradated point. It's pretty stiff. That's what you need to know about the brush. Other brush, co- a bunch of brush companies make this brush. It's a common brush. I like this one, but you can get any one you want. <laughs> I'm going to take a little bit of my brown and green together and I'm going to make a very very dark green and if I want to darken it even more I can add my phthalo blue to it and let's come here I see a really distinctive kind of kind of bit here and we're going to just very softly and notice because this brush is a little bit of a not tight brush in other words it doesn't give a crisp line this will help me create that sense of things being maybe a little diffused I'm going to press very lightly So you're going for that distant tree look. Yeah, we're going to put these little plants in, but we're going to do it by kind of optical illusion. We're not going to worry about bulking out and blending it all out and doing any of that stuff because we really don't have to. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to just bring this down here and say, pull a little fan of this out. And if you'll think a little bit about palms, how they do, Mm -hmm. you will want to put that in there. I am a light brush pressure. I'm not, per, I'm not pressing hard. I'm in my Goldilocks zone. 
right? I'm not pressing too hard. And I am just kissing the canvas and I'm making sure I leave lots of blue sky to shine, shine through because some of what is making this piece work is that there's a lot of blue sky to shine through. See, nice little focus, out of focus Yvonne. So lots of ways to do things out of focus. Lots and lots and lots. And I'm going to start with my dark greens and then I'll add some light greens in there. There's some uh, fun sort of bit coming here. I'll do short little strokes there. But it's got bits of little fronds that maybe are coming out that I can paint. I want darker than that, so I'll get into my blue, my phthalo blue, into my phthalo green with a little burnt sienna making a deep, dark, foresty kind of color. Isn't that nice? Mm. I like it. Yeah. Bring those little lines out here. John will get up close to the canvas periodically. And the reason we do that is, and this is true not just of my painting, but everybody's painting except like two guys um, where <laughs> there are two guys that they're so like tight and precise. They paint with little tiny brushes that up close and far away kind of look the same. But for everybody else who doesn't paint in that methodology, um, Paintings look better on camera. Uh, they, they look smoother. They look more uh, uh, resolved than they are. Yeah. And so we will periodically go up close so that you don't sit at home with anxiety looking at your canvas going, it doesn't look like hers. Because mine's on camera. Hmm. And unlike people, which apparently gain 15 pounds on camera, I'm really skinny. Yep. But <laughs> paintings look are. better. Art looks better on camera. It's a weird deal. Skinny. Hmm? You are very skinny. Oh, he's the nicest. I can't even and tell you. They wanted to know... Who did the artwork for my, for the stunt hands? You did that? Yeah, it's me. That's me. This is me when I'm on my own with no no purpose or goal other than the doodlies. Every once in a while, I do a thing called Spit Paint, which is an open artist challenge. And um, that came out of one of those, and it was about John. I use John as my muse. And I've been wanting to do something with it since I did that, and this this ended up being it. Thank you. Oh no, babe, thank you. You make all of this so much more doable. Mm. Bring a line across there. Little green, little brown, little blue. These are the dark colors right now. What I have to say the most fun about what we do is it a little upward stroke. There's not enough money in teaching free art to be able to bring the level of production we regularly do. <laughs> no. Does that make sense? <laughs> and I not. love that. I love that what we get to do is produce a quality product for free that couldn't exist elsewhere. Otherwise. And that's what I want to keep pushing to do every day better and better and better and better. Cause it's just that's fun for me. Oh, these are nice diffused little little fronds, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Continuing on, and every once in a while you may want to crisp up one. Some you put a little more, you'll be like, "Oh, you're a little more," and others you might be like, "No, you're less," and that's okay. You can also come in and get see the little of this yellow. Some of these are a little more green yellow. So you can put some of that in some of the spots. Just add some green yellow. I'm making little diffused marks. They're kind of random, aren't they? Mm -hmm. I'm just demonstrating some of this so that you can see where it is and how it's happening. I may come back and grabbing some green and yellow, you know, definitively add or subtract something. I, what I don't want to do is paint out all my sky. That's going to be the big thing in this painting is don't paint away all your sky. I'm going to go back into my darks again. 
And I can get back into these greens anytime. I just wanted you to know that they were there and that they were happening. This is just a big brush. You could really use any brush. The trick, the big thing that you're gonna need for this, guys, is that you're not pressing very hard and you're not trying to make really precision lines. You need a little bit of canvas showing through on these lines. Not just between the fronds, but just in general. Get a little more blue into some of that. See that? You find that down there. It's okay to do. And I'm making decisions about what to put where just based on the reference. Mm -hmm. Right? And yes, guys, I'm afraid you have to have the watermarked one because these licenses don't necessarily give me permission to give you one that, 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 uh, Unwatermarked. Right. It has so. to be like distinctly a teaching tool. Right. So because they don't want us repackaging stock stock art and reselling it, which is not what we're doing. We're yeah. giving you guys reference materials for painting. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is to me. I was the one who agreed to the agreement with this. So. <laughs> you cannot use that image for anything else but to look at and paint. Right. So uh, watermarking it is one of the things we agreed to do. Yeah. And honestly, in this particular case, watermarking is super useful. Yep. I'm going to bring some. There's quite a lot up here. And I can even be a little more aggressive with this here. I'm still letting these lines be not sharp. Per se. And John's going to keep going back and forth and just showing you how often I'm going to the surface. If I need to get a little more of a pointed line out, I do add more water. And you can see that gives me a little more of a sharp edge line and then where I need to, it to be. A little bit thinner. And push up. I like to push up. <laughs> I do actually like to push up. I do. Oh. Mm. They're offering the double walled mugs. Oh, yeah. So I've got some prototypes of those for our store. I just haven't had a chance to do it. And, you know, and I may give John the art and he may turn these into towels and stuff that we make or aprons or whatever. But just right now we're all getting caught up. And again, YouTube's like, you've got to have some stuff with the banner. So I was like, fine. <laughs> I will. This is my emoji club. <laughs> all that stuff that they do. You know, and behind the flower, there will be some green, right? Mm hmm so that's we need to make sure that we've got it there. And that's why we're doing these diffuse moments. And we'll step back. We're not going to be part of the contrast that you're building up. Yeah. We were not going to get all stressed and in our heads, right? No. No. Let's not be stressed and in our heads. Where I'm doing this lighter green, what this represents, guys, is that um, there's some light maybe in the frond. Mm. When... Believe me, it's super easy to be critical of your out of focus fronds. Oh, so easy to be critical, which but is why we're going to show you up close so you can see. It's yeah, it's I'm going to come. I'm going to give you a quick walk as soon as she's done with this when we, before we go on to the next step. But you'll see that these are very brushy strokes. Brushy, and 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 that's actually how we're getting the out of focus effect. We're counting on them being brushy, because if they're not. They won't seem diffused. And just about the point that you feel like this is an uncomfortable background, you're it's, probably done. Yeah, it's it's a really interesting space to be <laughs> in. You're going like, to be like, Argh! 
eh, maybe it's a background, you're probably there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put out some more white from my messy tubes. How you guys doing? Oh, yes. Yeah, it's super messy background. It's wonderful. And yeah, they just haven't watched a whole bunch of these. They, it's it's weird because you look for this appropriate level of, yeah, mess. that's a background. Yeah, you're looking for the appropriate level. I added some white to my yellow so that these bits down here, which again are out of focus. This is where they are. Make sure that there's some very light values so that it feels like there's some light in the green. And I'm always like just kind of going through, just trying to find that spot. Rinse out. No, maybe some dark blues here in the background that we could be something. When you see this kind of stuff where it is almost like an abstract, you know, don't run away from it, play in it. Play in the abstract. I'm going to add a little bit of sky color and I will make sure that I have holes distinctly in my sky. There is a very good question. I have a very good answer. Ask your very good question. Was that fo reference photo shopped? <laughs> and I can honestly say that very, very likely yes. And the reason for it is that, that it has a, you get it while I paint. a very high dynamic range. And something that you guys pointed out is how dark the background is compared to how light the foreground object is and how well it was lit. That would require an extremely skilled photographer with a very good camera setup or a decent camera and Photoshop. Now, with this photographer, that's I would have to look through their collection to be sure. But chances are, by given how pushed those reds are against how dark that green background is, it's very unlikely that was an, an unmodified photo. And you can see by how strong the yellow on the bleeding edge of the flower is. That's another sort of telltale giveaway that some of the color spectrum has been crushed. Yeah. Also, the overblown green leaves in the highlight just below it. and yeah. that I, Which I love. So sometimes yeah. I have a group. Uh, I think it's still got some openings in it. That's the 18 plus uh, fledgling artist challenge. And it's just we pick photos for you that make good paintings. Because I can, sometimes what is a great photo is a terrible painting. This photo, I was like, oh, this is the basis of a wonderful painting. Mm -hmm. You know, and you'll, you'll have that. Now I might go through here and just find a couple spots. But in all fairness, they might have just taken that with an iPhone 12 and it just was like magic. <laughs> just these days, right? Just like, pating, took the picture. The iPhone 12 is really, we're not, they didn't pay us. No, they probably but, should for us saying this, but it really is just, it just takes all the effort it, out of it and also protects your security from Facebook. We've become a more iPhone centric because of that, just weird. But, Online yeah. entertainer tip, what we decided to do to protect our family, if you were wondering. Now you know. But cameras with artificial intelligence aren't really the same either. Yeah. But it's still shopped. <laughs> Just by a robot. <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure that we've got really great lines. And what made this background wonderful is present here. Mm. Like one of the things is, is that my value there still needs to deepen to give us that same effect. So I'm going to take a little of my brown. You'll find with greens that you've got a layer. They uh, tend to be transparent, all the greens, very few opaque greens. So often you will find yourself layering the color. Irene points out that this was taken with a fill flash mm -hmm. and you can tell by the shadow of yeah. the stamen on the Which petal, is so which, awesome, isn't it? That's 
<laughs> like she knows I picked it because that shadow was like that. Like I was like, ooh, nice shadow you have there. But you notice there's two of them. There's one on the four four yeah. pedal and one on the back pedal. Yeah. And that was because of the. So anyway, interesting. Yes, but it's fun to our eye, isn't it? So our eye likes what our eye likes. It does. And come back with a little sky and. Sometimes I'll put in little, little kind of, um, they're like, this is the, this is important guys, getting in these little dots of white. When you are away from your painting, when you're standing back, it's a big deal. And if you need to know specifically where I put something like this, adding a highlight here, that's why the other reason why the step by steps are so nice and so important. I'm going to paint kind of around this here. And there are things I can do in my painting that are even better than what you can do in photography. Because, you know, as somebody once mentioned, it's your world. Mm hmm. I am not limited by the laws of light and physics. I'm no, only we, limited by imagination. We can do all sorts of things in here. I can, turn right. the, I can turn the lights on and off. But when I do that, I sometimes scare the Sherpa, so I don't do that. I'm just trying to get to a place where my brain says, oh, I like it, where I'm like, oh, yeah, that's nice. As soon as I get there, which I think I'm there, I'm going to call that done because I think that that accomplishes what we need. Done. Things I was looking for is to leave a nice area of blue so when the pedal kind of comes in, there's still this great blue contrast here. Mm -hmm. So there's a blue contrast here and a green contrast here in this big gorgeous focal flower. That's an important thing and I wanted to leave that. Now, we're going to dry this, photograph it. Um, you should dry at home. This is a stage where either we're going to do the simplified grid or we're going to use our traceable. Okay. Mm. You do the dry dry and I'll talk to them. You do the dry dry? You talk to them? Okay. Do the dry dry. I'm going to need a coffee warm up. We'll get that in a second. Okay, push the button. <sighs> okay. So while she's drying that, I'm going to remind you guys to... Uh, when you're drying your surface, don't use heat because uh, it can cause problems for acrylic paint, which is made of a polymer, which is heat responsive. So just skip all of the nonsense that I have to drone on about drying paint. Just don't use heat and thoroughly dry. Now, thoroughly dry it so it does give you a nice even pull surface throughout it, uh, and that will help um, in your next layers. So you don't pick up any of the underlying colors and muddy that stuff up. Acrylic is about layers. Don't forget, check in the description down below while you're hanging out. May as well smash that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell to get the all reminder for when we're going live. And also, if you'd like to get text message notifications, you can send a message to uh, the phone number 33222. Send the message, the Art Sherpa, and you'll get notifications as well. And we'll tell you, hey, we're live teaching art for free. Just bring your materials. Come along. We'll show you how to do something. Sure. Do it on Facebook here. I it's even true. have watercolor classes. Dude, they're good. They're good. They're goofy, but they're good. So now. Picture and heat up with the coffee. Wait, that's picture, not the picture, right picture, one. Picture, heat up with it the did coffee. the wrong one. It said it's funny. All right. I'm going to go back and check that in a second. I'm going to get you. You tell them what you're doing, though. So what I'm going to do when he comes back is I am going to use my T-square, which is a ruler device that makes sure my lines are straight. And I'm going to measure out marks that match the uh, reference image that you guys have. Um, I'm going to use that to help me find placement and scale in my painting. It's not that you guys can't draw at all. I know you say probably to lots of people in your life that you cannot. You can. But there's a couple things that your brain hasn't learned about drawing yet. We'll say yet. 
And there are a couple things that you will have to develop and understand about drawing. And, I, and the best thing that you can do to get better at drawing is just draw all the time. Draw everything, draw all the time. Um, and, you know, take drawing classes and, you know, practice your drawing. But also, believe it or not, using traceables uh, and using gridding can help you start to understand how objects uh, happen on canvas. Like, because one of the things that messes with people is that this is flat, but we're painting something three-dimensional. So that can be really challenging for you if you're not sure how that's done. I am going to therefore um, come across and I need to do this in a different viewing space so that I can see everything. Nope, it never came through. What? Uh, give me just a second, guys. I, I use my reference as well. I always use a reference. You guys should use reference. References are important. It just won't let me get into what I need to get into. Maybe if I edit, there we go. <laughs> edit, it says, okay, I understand what you're saying. All right, so at five inches, which is uh, here on centimeters, like just a little bit past 12 and a half, at 10 inches, which is uh, really at 25 and a half centimeters, and at 15 inches, which is just, really at 38. So I'm not really great at centimeters, but I try to tell you guys where they are because I recognize almost the entire rest of the world uses them <laughs> for some sensible reason about math I've been told and science. So I'm using these guides, right, to help me do this. I use a tool called a pastel chalk pencil. This is white. Uh, I think this one is a general. I also have credit color. I do have some links for these in the description. You can find them online and you can also just use the kind of chalk that you would use on a kid's chalkboard. I use chalk because it will not interfere with the acrylic paint at all, which is a real problem. I'm also gonna make a mark at four inches, which is 10 centimeters at eight inches, which is between 20 and 21. I'm gonna add centimeters to this thing. I think. Are you? Yeah, I think so. You're going to learn the ways of the metric? No, no, probably not. Because it's math. But don't but go crazy I, now. I don't want to be messing with people. I respect everybody. <laughs> so I don't want to be like, this is my way. So you have to do it my way because it's how I do it. Because I just don't care that much about my way. I care that you guys get a good result and have a pleasant time painting. So my way is that important to me. I can see where it's important to some. It's just not that important to me. You just need a line. I just need a line and I'm going to flip this over. I thought you might. So I could get to this line very easily. And this lets my grid match the grid reference on my surface. All right. I make sure I don't feel like the center line really popped for me the way I wanted it to. There we go. I don't, I do go over and make sure that I see the line. I'm not pressing in with my pencil because I'm not trying to make an indention in the paint I can't remove. I'm just trying to make a nice chalk line so I can see what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. That's all that's going on here. When I have that in, right, you can, if you have trouble kind of keeping track, give yourself a little reminder of what line you're on um, and match that up, and that can help help you too. And right away, you can see here on the eight line in between 10 and 12, is kind of the center. It's a little bit above and a little bit below, isn't it? Yes. Of the flower. So I'm going to start my bottom petal. And I use the grid as a guide. Like I know the petal is going to be open like this, but it's actually going to come through and in and out the square and not completely touch this one. That's helpful in my placement, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Right. And this one comes up and actually has a little curve out. Exits here. Comes through about there. When you understand where objects are exiting and entering the space, a lot of times you can you can draw the curve, right? Like you're perfectly capable of drawing the curve. The whole flower in its totality might be a little much. Might might give you a little grief. I'm going to exaggerate this space a bit because I like it. And coming off here and going right there is the next petal. 
And that petal comes almost all the way over to here. So that's a nice big mark, isn't it? Oh, so nice, nice curved mark. It's going to come down through here, through here, and back here. That's how I f keep track of where things are going to be coming in and out, how I keep track of what's called scale. How do we handle scale? Now, do you have a grid reference on the website? Yes. Okay. There's a grid reference on the website, on the web page, and the link in the description below. There's a traceable. There's some materials information. Uh, pretty quick after this, though, will be a step-by-step time stamping and a mini guide. So a mini printout guide. Yeah. Because uh, it never went to you like a crazy person. Ah, I could try to send it to you again. I you wish I had one. it for you. I, tr I usually get mine from his, his file system, where, which we share, but it wouldn't let me send it to him, and I could only send it to my iPad. It was very weird. Huh. We're having kind of a glitchy day, and we had kind of a weird day yesterday, so. Yeah, we got a hard drive that crashed, so I'm in the middle of yeah. recovering it. He had an arm that crashed. He had to go to the ER yesterday to get some shots in his <laughs> arm, and then his hard drive crashed. <laughs> All of his things, his body to his technology has been breaking and there's been no sleep. So we all got to send some love to John. Little angel hearts. Little angel hearts. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing okay. He's one of those, like, if you're like, I see you're hurting. He's like, I am fine. It is just a little cut. <laughs> and the arm's like, shh, 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 shh. <laughs> Monty Python was talking about him. I'm going to bring that next there, and I know that's going to come Just here. Just a flesh wound. Just a flesh wound that I can't sleep or deal with or be okay. Sometimes that happens, you know. And right now, doctors are so concerned about making sure people are safe in relationship to medication that we couldn't get anybody to really see it until we went into the ER. So it's not like it was super serious, except it was serious enough to have to go because that's the only way you can get anything it right now. Wasn't it, it wasn't the ER. It was an orthopedic, orthopedic urgent care. Yeah. Wasn't that the same thing? Um, no. Oh, okay. There, um, as I kind of? As I discovered, um, orthopedic urgent care basically is if you got joints or body parts, not internal medicine related, that they can help fix. In other so, words, you messed yourself up goofing around right, playing sports muscles, and you need to see somebody right now. Yeah, like muscles and bones. And, and we'll bring this down right here to the center of that little curve. Maybe even a little bit of neural stuff. Okay. But it's It's been not fun. I, what I would say is that, yeah, I got to have a joint injection and learn what that does to the to human you. stress response system. So we figured out John's big and nerve response do, 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 to that. Do, not fun, roller coaster ride. <laughs> it was not. We did not even work on acrylic April yesterday. I just sort of watched John sleep. My lights just went out. And answer questions on the YouTube channel. Watch John sleep. All right. So you can see that I'm working out my little sketching in, and hopefully you're able to work that in at home. Um, ho are you able to help them see this as we go, John? We see as good as we can see, which is, I think, pretty good. I mean, they see the line. We okay. See what as you're long drawing. as we're seeing the line and... You know, here's what I have a special trick I do with this for the mini book, which mm -hmm. will help you a lot. But I got to finish the lesson and, you know, we get that sort of uh, written up and then we try to get it out to you. Now, this line here, right, comes up to here and then there's a little bit of a curve out. We love this little floral up. It goes flurly, 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 flurly. Very technical term, the flurly. Mm hmm. Something that hibiscus really do well. They, they got the best little flurlies. My mom is a ginger cook, and she loves to paint her some hibiscus. A little abstracty hibiscus <laughs> is very fun. So uh, having been around her my whole life, I'm very familiar with the hibiscus nature. <laughs> yeah. I have a little different way of doing it. Because <laughs> that's what we do is we rebel, right? Mm -hmm. Rebel, rebellion in art kind of for no reason. I'm going to do a nice curved stamen up here. This has a great curve. Just placing that will help me later know where I'm going to be. Because that's one we're going to kind of paint after as we go. 
I also, it's nice to remind yourself where the dark shadow in the center of the flower is going to be because having the highlight here and the dark shadow here is going to do a lot to shape your flower. Now that is the flower there. Guess what? We also have. You have a bud. A bud. And I really love these. I am not editing this out. It's the flowers, little bud. Those buddy. of you that were worried, is she going to edit it? No, not this. This is terrific. It's the skipper and Gilligan. It is the skipper and Gilligan. Oh, my gosh. Dude, seriously, hey, fix the boat. Stop building power plants out of coconuts and fix the boat. You know what's funny? I watched their 1988 reunion again recently. Yeah, did they all yell about fixing the boat? Well, they did. They were like, <laughs> and they had the writer of the show on, mm -hmm. and he was like, well, there was a lot of interesting things, like the professor had six degrees. Oh my gosh, fix the boat, dude. None of the, well, the answer was none of them were in boat building. Oh, that's ridiculous. He could have built a boat. <laughs> so He's Building power plants out of coconuts, he could have built a boat. But the uh, the relationship between uh, the the characters there was very genuine. It's very very good show. It's one of the reasons I think why I think it went did so well. I'm so sorry as I see them passing because it's the end of an era for so many people. I think. But if you want to go back and see some genuine, good old school American television, like watch Gilligan, Wandavision. <laughs> Gilligan, the, <laughs> Wandavision's great. No, Gilligan's watch Island. Wandavision. It's there's. There's very few episodes of that that weren't well written. It's true that, right? I loved I Dick Van Dyke show was me. Mm. Oh yeah. I watched those reruns as a kid. I and like, then Bewitched was, was a big deal. My parents were witnesses, so that was a big deal in my house. I had to sneak that. Get the spankins. It's spankins. <laughs> <laughs> Get away them spankins. Recently I'm watching a lot of Dick Cavett. Oh, who doesn't love Dick Cavett? Just all the old uh, interviews were pretty good. Sometimes I like to watch, watch uh, the Galloping Gourmet. Oh, yeah. I don't know what he's eating, but it sounds like it's yummy, and it always has the butter. <laughs> Which is probably going to be legal soon. All right, so I've put in enough lines, and, and, and we'll take a picture here so we have the step, and then on we'll do the replacing. Could this thing. be a step? This is the step. This Sketchy is the in is the step. 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 Sketchy step. Step it's a sketchy, untrustable step. But either you have put the traceable on at this stage or you have sketched in your hibiscus. And we like to do this in real time instead of doing, we, we actually have a way we could like a cooking show past it. But I think sometimes you guys seeing me work it out, if I have a challenge, how I fix it, like what I'm going through is actually really helpful to you at home knowing what's happening. And so the reason I like to do these live is there's no real way for me to like, correct my mistakes except in front of you which then you know how to correct them so always good but knock on wood we're not going to have any today knock on wood all righty thank you stunt hands let's put out our reds i'm gonna miss my uh paper a little bit so everything stays wet i see my Corners are curling up, and when I see that, I know it needs to be a little bit missed in. It'll soak it back up. All right. Cadmium red. You could use naphthol red medium. Uh, if you need to. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put in a little more than that. We know we're going to need a minute of cadmium red. That seems reasonable. Yeah. And I really like, you could darken yours with black. I really enjoy um, sometimes darkening mine with purple and not just black because um, it lets me deepen it without um, taking the vibrancy away. Strange little trick that I have. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to put out some black. Um, I'll put it over here, and here's why, because it's very hard on the palette to sell dioxazine purple from black. You know, not your favorite, and I know that. I don't know. I I can see some magenta in there. I'll put it out because sometimes, you know, that that combo, those two colors is so much. It's so much wonderfulness. Put out some more white. We have plenty of burnt sienna. Oh, my green. Let's keep the paint out of your white. And I think I'm good there on that. 
I don't know if I'm going to get into my tight knit yellow, which is this color. It's still in the list. I'll remove it if I don't use it. <laughs> so right now what we're going to do is we're going to put in the main values and we're going to want to use a brush that's kind of uh, big enough to let me paint it in, but it's going to give me some control. So I'm going to use my number eight cat's tongue. It's a filbert, pointed filbert. So you could use this or you could use a bright, which would also be okay, right? Just something around this size you're going to want to grab from your brush bucket. This is what I'm using. Now for sure, I want to talk about the center of the hibiscus. So I'm going to make my initial shadow color, which is my diox purple and my cad red. Uh oh, the charger isn't charging the chargey thing, John. And it's about mm. to die on me. Okay, I will work on the chargey thing. Yeah. You do the you do your thing, I'll I'm do gonna my do thing. the thing. Don't let my don't let my reference go away. We don't want me to paint this from imagination. I mean All I right. could, but who knows what will happen then, right? I'm gonna just make sure. And I know where the dark center is. Thank you, babe. You want it to be a dark center. It still has a little red cast into it, but you really want to know where it is. I'm also going to bring little dark shadow lines that kind of help me define each petal from the other. All right. So bring this little where these two are joined. And then there's sort of a very interesting little curl curve between these two. So we'll definitely speak to that. See where we're putting this little line. And those kind of just help us keep track of what is going on. As I'm going up the flower, I'll just get more into my red here. So it's still deepened a bit by the purple, but it's definitely a little more red, isn't it? And I'll go ahead and speak to the little curl lines that come in. And then also right here, there's a very interesting shadow. So you may want to catch that shadow while everything's happening. Mm. Catch it. That's just my docks and my purple. And then you can easily get back into your red. The thing when you're new and you're painting flowers, one of the things that you can do to improve your flowers a lot as a beginner is your brush strokes need to go the way the petal grows. You don't want to go against the grain of the petal. You know how fabric has a grain, wood has a grain. Mm -hmm. You need to go with the grain, with the growth of the petal. Number one thing that you can really, really do to improve your relationship to the flower. I may make that a little more noticeable and darker just so that later when I put its little details in, I don't have a hard time finding what they were. A little bit edge here. And then again, you can go right into the red. Much like our uh, uh, beta tail, right? Or our, our gnomey gnomes. Mm -hmm. Take my little purple here if I need to. Just work those. And then back into the red. And let the edge here be a little bit ruffled as you do. You guys see how that's going? Mm -hmm. Painting a hibiscus flower. 
Painting hit the hour. Let's come here. A little furled in a bit. It is a little furled in a bit. I may have to chalk in. I just brought my little reflection up. Now I may wipe off with my towel. Wipe and paint on my face. And I'll come in with a slightly brighter red. You need a little more water to improve the flow of your paint. Don't be afraid of doing that. Okay. Need that. I'll come neatly around the fold. Doesn't have to be perfect because again, I'm going to come back with a number four round and do some detailing there. Where the petal is, I'm going to definitely allow my brush stroke to create a fairly interesting edge. And this does create a very fairly interesting edge. I'm going in the direction of the petal. As you can see. There we go. Keeping those brush strokes the way the petal grows. Sure that that's nice. If I have to rinse out, I can come back and use my brush to sort of soften that transition. Because we can always come back and put it in in a minute, and then we step back and look at it and sip mine. Now, slightly warmer coffee. <laughs> What do you think would happen if we put like a little microwave here so it could just go? I was thinking what would be more better is if we just had a hot mug plate. We did the hot mug plate, but what would happen is it just made it skin and soup. Remember, it just made it soup. I'll see about setting one okay. up right here. We could probably do that. I've got me. We could try. Extra. Let's try. So let's do the same process here. Purple and red. We're going to come up on this petal, kind of showing the shadow. And remember, this is layer one. Ready player, re ready painter layer one. <laughs> like a couple people, that was good. Ready painter layer one. And you can see what I mean about the purple, you know, especially the oxazine purple reads almost as a true black. It's just a little more vibrant. This does not mean I'm one of the people that think you can't use black in, in landscape painting and all that stuff. That is not how any of that works. All right. So I ended up watching John as we curl in these little brush strokes, blending them into the petal on Netflix, the new Coming to America too. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I always worry for sequels because you never know how it's going to go for the creators. Like, it could go great. It could go bad. You don't know. But I was actually happy. 
Mm -hmm. Weirdly. Yeah, I mean, it was goofy. It was a lot, you know, the 80s called and they wanted all their movies back. But it was just so nice to see the performers and see them do their craft and make their movie. And uh, I have to say, for me, the breakout of the whole movie, even though you think it would be Eddie and he was amazing, and, and he was. Everybody in it was amazing. Let's just go with everybody in it was amazing. But weirdly for me, the breakout was Wesley Snipes. Oh, yeah? That was like, I, I don't know. He brought forth some of the energy from uh, Julie Newmar <laughs> to Wong Fu. <laughs> Remember that movie? He brought forth some of that energy. Oh. And there was some. There were a couple moments where I was like, I don't know how the cast kept it together. <laughs> Maybe they I, didn't. I, I have to think some of those took a lot of takes. Because I would just be like, because he's such like, he's just so. Ch-. And then he would like do these like little moments like, you think you know me? <laughs> and he would be like, you could see him be like oh, i'm not gonna lose it <laughs> it was just so i don't know for me it was nice and i love seeing it and you know it was a movie i liked when i was younger so i watched mm-hmm. i always worry about speaking on sequels because people have such strong feelings on sequels <laughs> like much stronger than entertainment really requires but I was just happy to do it, and it was time well spent and really enjoyed seeing uh, the people. And then they kind of went back to some of the stuff in the movie, like what happened to the, the girl that he had barking. And, like, we got to see some stuff again, so it was interesting for me. I'm going to continue to paint with my purple and my cad red. Uh, this little bit will be a smidge darker than the rest of this petal, but it will be nowhere near as dark as the central petals. But you'll notice I'm still brushing in the direction of the growth of the petal. I expect to see quite a lot of fan art of it hit YouTube, though, pretty soon. So again, I'm deepening the red with purple. Not black, you being it with purple, not black. And then I'm going to pull it into brighter uh, colors as we paint out. Always leave some room for yourself, though, to, um, and I'll do my, the edge of my petal and these little outer edges here so that it's sort of beautiful and delicate and crepey. These flowers are very crepey. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the things you want to kind of capture whenever you're painting a hibiscus. Realistically or um, abstractly, there are certain things about your subject matter that if you can capture it, it will greatly improve the outcome of the painting itself. Now, which brand of red are you using? I am, which brand? So I've got, I'll show you all my brands. I've got Sennelier Red. I really love their Cad Red. And their Cad Red Light is like, so good. Um, of the yellow, I actually like the tight knit yellow from Golden over the Naples light yellow that they have in the line. I just love this pure pigment. Um, the Quinacridone Magenta is Artist Loft Level 3. And that's what I'm sort of sporting today is Sennelier, uh, Artist Loft Level 3, and Golden Artist Colors. You could do all of my artwork if you went into Michael's from the Golden line and from the Artist Loft Level 3. Mm-hmm. All the colors are there. You can see I'm just trying to make sure that I get that. I'm going to pull this in so I don't lose track of where, where does the brush stroke grow? Goes this way. How does it grow? It grows like this, which means I need to make sure my brush stroke goes like that. Now I will want to cover this all up, even though I know I've got layers, ogres and layers and all the things. Oh man, Wesley Snipes was so good. I'm going to think about that all day now. <laughs> it just made it for me. Like I, I, I try to go into movies, like I went into Bill and Ted, like trying not to have an expectation because I was, I, I, I try to go into it, like just assuming the actors are so happy to work together again and. The, the crew and team are probably happy to be together again and try to just appreciate what they bring me. And I was okay on Bill and Ted. It was all right. 
I wasn't sad, but I wasn't like, woo, but Wesley, I, I was like, that's, it, it was like, I was on that edge, that razor's edge when you watch a show where you're like, is it going to be three or four stars? You know the edge. It's definitely not going to be five. But you're like, could be three, could be four, not really sure. And then, and then Wesley did all his stuff and I'm just like, it's four. It's a solid four. Mm -hmm. if, if you're somebody that knows him, please say good job. Really good work. I, it's not the stuff that gets an academy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not the stuff that gets a lot of award recognition, but it probably should. Because to me, that stuff is harder. And if you're talking to any of these actors, please tell them to come paint with us. <laughs> we would totally have them on the show. <laughs> we'll just like, <laughs> come paint with us. We I will have would. you on the show. <laughs> we'll, we'll get you an easel. <laughs> pull, pull up a brush. We'll have a chit chat. Cinnamon will talk about your latest acting gig. <laughs> it would be a funny sideshow, wouldn't it be? <laughs> Painting with Wesley Snipes. Like I would be on the uh -oh. Twix. <gasps> oh, dog. You guys okay Can't... at home? John, you have on you're on my neck. <laughs> oh, sorry. Dogs. Dog. Oh, let them see her because they're gonna be so worried if she's okay. She's fine. She's in I my know. lap. Oh, Go see. Her. She's okay. Go see her. She got startled. Go see her. She Twixies? Oh, that was scary. That was so scary. Tell him, tell him how scary that was. That was so scary. Shaggy dog scary. She was right underneath my chair, and then I got her, like, some furs. Some furs. She was like, rah, 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 rah. Mm. Okay. No, it's still cuddles. <laughs> still cuddles. Because we're calming each other. She's, she's going to get groomed, like, in a couple days. She's going to be so fluffy. Right now, she's had that first day of spring where she ran out in the mud and got dirty. <laughs> oh, and they love her. Sticky. And they she's like, I've got the sticks all over her fur. And she's over here sniffing my wheel going, is that thing going to get me again? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. We're, like, we're all distracted doing our show like, dog, we have to stop now for dog care, which I know every single audience member of ours totally understands a thousand percent. I know you guys. I know you get it. We are nothing if not a community of animal lovers. I'm going to come in with just a little brighter red just to make sure that these pull apart from each other. Now, this and last petal here. I'm, huh? You have to forgive me. I may be asking a somewhat dumb question. There are no dumb questions. People need to stop qualifying their questions as dumb. Do hibiscuses grow in Hawaii? You know, I absolutely have no idea where the flower is native. I mean, I mean, they do now, but I don't know where the flower, if it originated in Hawaii. Because or not, this, to be so super honest. I mean, this has a very, uh, I don't know, Hawaii the, vibe to oh, it. Oh, no, this, this does. Like, this, play, this took place in Hawaii. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've never been well, I guess there. It could be, the, it could be a lot, lot of about, other places, sure. but um, I believe, actually, factually, that this one did. Um, I think it, like that could be the Bahamas or um, yeah. maybe Jamaica. We don't travel enough is what I've it seen, is. Yeah, I've got friends who send me pictures. Um, Things. Fiji. There's I kind of brought this petal over that other petal, and we'll, keep to, we'll continue to exaggerate the separation of those two petals as we, as we go forward. Bye. I've seen pictures of Brazil that kind of look like this. Oh, yeah. Movie that I loved as a kid that would not, you know, John and I like to play, would it hold up? A movie that I loved as a kid that would not hold up it today is uh, Blame It on Rio. Mm. <laughs> like, at all, would it hold up? But at the time, everybody was like, that's cool. <laughs> it was like Demi Moore's first role or something. Oh. And Michael Caine was in it. But this, uh, for me, what I loved about it was the scenery and the sets and everything about the, that part of the movie. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to continue to brush this out. Shonda, anything with Jack Black would rule. Anything with Jack Black would rule. He's awesome. He's just so awesome. And also, like, so if we were to play, like, celebrity paint-along, wouldn't he be fun to watch? Hmm? He would just be hysterical. I'm doing a little purple here because there's a shadow cast from this petal onto that petal. Guess what we just finished? A petal. A petal. Let's call this a step because that was a bit of a minute and heat my coffee again. Okay. And then we'll put the background on the stem in and then we'll come forward and keep painting on this. Isn't this 
you can see this is going to be like so nice worth the time worth the effort worth the time and i'm loving how you guys are getting these big results these mini books if you're uh, the doc the sunset doc mini book is out the uh, dreamy sunset with the perfect wave that mini book is out we're getting them out really quick um the uh the video i the cloud video on how to do the clouds that mini book is out how i paint clouds with all that extra information i'm finishing up the studio setup and i'm going to finish up um the other one that i have going on but the color mixing one i'm kind of getting these wrapped up as we go but i'm really loving them and if you don't want to print these out give us a minute we're working on our self-publishing at home okay so i need to put out some more thalo green and thank you for heating my coffee I got some more thalo green i just told him it's okay you don't have to see it oh i'm like oh you don't have to see it no no no, no. and he's not even doing that I, do you love it when you're like you're telling your partner not to worry about it, it's okay they don't have to do a thing and then they weren't even doing the thing and you're like i feel silly so you can kind of see already how we're able to in paint really create the emotion and the effect of this photograph and almost in a painting i feel like it's even a little better right like it's the very act of painting it that makes space for all these unusual elements like the double lighting and all those things lets us have that and um and i did didn't have very much to edit out what i really love is when i when i don't have to edit anything out i've got to ask one of our moderators cad yellow if i can uh mess with that photo reference she sent me today because i had like the craziest sky but i was like looking at it i was like could i put it on the show and i was like no i'd have to edit like 10% of this photo because there was all this like background stuff, but I was like, I could probably pre-paint it and it would be okay. So, mm, pretty cool, pretty awesome. And I'm liking these steps. And remember, information is description below. So when we timestamp this, we also put those timestamps in the description so you can find those chapters. We put them in the comments so you can find those chapters. We put them on the web page so you can find those chapters. And we put them in the mini books so you can find those chapters. Because I want you guys to be able to find the chapters. I do not like being uh, uh, mysterious with students because that isn't fun when you're trying to learn. Mystery isn't fun. Mystery is fun when you're watching an entertainment show. Mystery is not fun in education. All right. Did we photograph? Yeah. You sure? And we stepped? I'm pretty sure. Okay. Do we? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we stepped. Okay. <laughs> as long as we stepped and we photographed, I think we're okay. I put out some green, I've got some brown here, and we're going to just make sure we get a very dark, and in this one instance, I am going to use black because I want the contrast. I'm going to put in my stems. Thank you, my dove. That's my daughter. She's amazing. Kind of put in some. I'm on my number eight cat's tongue still. I'm going to make a stem. It's quite dark, notice. Oh, hold on a second. Let me get rid of that. little dark shape there. I don't like the thickness of that, so I will thin that line. I also will need some green, light green. So I'm going to take my green and my phthalo green and my yellow. Make sure that I've got a little bit of a beginnings of a leaf that's right here. And you can even get kind of some yellow and green into it because the tip of it is very light. See? Fun stuff. Most of this is a fairly dark green. Just putting in the dark green, wonderful stems and things that are here. I think that they added 
to what was going on. I think they were helpful. I'll bring the stem down long in front of these leaves. Sometimes I got to push things back to where they go. A little more leaf in shadow. And then we'll say that there's maybe some little flourishes that come off here. Pulling in a little pull stroke. Now we're doing that. We're coming in, we touch it, we just pull it back and kind of layer them in. Trying to make sure that we are. Oh, no, super okay. I'm going to uh, say that there's a little bit of leaf here. I'm going to turn it around this way. It's got a, a little thoughtfulness there. So these are in the background, right? But they're nice to have these sharp leaves, these sharp colors. Where we might have them, you know, for the stem. I'm also going to take my green and my yellow and Just the beginning. These are, this is, you know, an underpainting of this. We're not uh, trying to resolve all of the, it, you know, thoughts in the world about. Where are you going? Oh, there you are. We're just trying to. Go along and paint those in. So varying the greens, thinking about how those are registering in the background. It's a good idea to like make sure that you've got some some little little sharp edges that talk about that space pretty pretty distinctly now while I'm here I think I'm gonna take my quinacridone and my cad red and I'm gonna come on the toe of my brush this is still my number eight cat's tongue Okay. I'm bringing the hint of the stem. So I took the quinacridone and and the magenta, the cad, and it's still giving me kind of an in the shadow stem. But you'll notice that there's a, a bit of a luminosity to it. Now in the base, I might grab a little of my Doc's Purple and come back up and notice that because I did that, that sort of creates a blended, a bit of a shadow on that stem. And at this stage, I can get a little yellow into my stem color, which is my Quinn, even a little white. And just up here at the top, Coming on the top edge, just a bit of a line. So we're just trying to say, hey, there's a little, I don't want to take away paint. Sometimes that happens 
away paint. You don't want to take away paint. So we'll call that a step. Yeah. And then we'll get back into some flower stuff and I'll set my coffee again while it's still warm. Okay. But see, now we're starting to build it in. We're seeing the background. It's getting kind of fun. Hibiscus. It's just a red hibiscus. I have many hibiscus on the channel. I have a hibiscus and hummingbird from years ago, years and years ago. Um, I have several hibiscus that you can come paint. And my mom has some hibiscus, ginger cook lot. And now you have this hibiscus. You could have a whole room of hibiscus. Huh? Theartsherpa.com. Check out theartsherpa.com and search the word hibiscus. It's a fun flower to paint. I may do it more because there's so many varietals of hibiscus. Okay, so now that we have these petals, we can start putting some thoughtfulness into our petals. I put out a little more red. I've got my magenta. When I want to lighten red, I, if I'm going to use white, the only white you can really use is zinc. In this particular case, I'm going to do most of the lightening with my uh, lightening of my red. And actually, I will put my titanium yellow out. I like it. it. Does a nice job of also lightening. So I might use it. Think about it. I might. Maybe not. Maybe we'll. We'll find out as I go. Gonna need clean water soon. So these have highlights. And you've got to really get in there with the lightness of color. So I'm going to take my red and I'm going to lighten it with my yellow. Oh, wrong button. Not that one. This one. I'm going to go get her some water. I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah, I need water. It's wonderful to have water. And I'll add more red as I'm going. And you can see that by bringing it into the orange. Sorry, I'm not handing you things like I should. I'm not being a good coast stun hands. I'm doing a good job. Take that there. And then as I want to, I can always get more into the red that I have. Right. Come on the other side as well, because it's fairly bright over here. And you can see this also helps that stem to start to stand out. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're so amazing. Now I'll get more into my red. You know, and as I'm coming down into that area where I had red and purple, I can get some magenta in there. See how we do? Mm -hmm. Create some vibrancy. Back into some purple. Because we want to blend it up. I'm going to wipe out or rinse and wipe out. Come back with some pretty dark purple. Right there. Come along the edge of this nice little petal here and I've added some magenta into it. Look at that, how that worked. Isn't that just a special moment? That's why I use the palette that I use. I am letting these brush strokes go in the direction of the petal, aren't I? Now, in these types of flowers, for sure, you will have a vein. So I'm going to come over to where my purple and magenta are, and I will add white that way. And I may add that vein in. That's going to have a little bit of that in it. So it's not such a... 
we'll come back and we'll highlight it. We just want it to be a little less. And grab a little of my magenta, but mostly my cad red. If I do get into my white now, it will won't make the whole flower go peach instead of red. See, I'm adding just a little. The white is just a little here. Coming along just a little. Go along this little edge. And back and look at that beautiful little petal. Oh, so pretty. So pretty. Right. And we have those little veinings in there. We know where they are. We know what they are. We're good with it. The other thing that can be nice is I can take a little of this on my edge here. And just highlight. It's not a big highlight. But it's an, enough. Huh? Art high five to Perth, Australia. Perth, Shh. Australia? Just... Whenever I see people on the other side of the globe, I get Why excited. not, right? Because it's like, you know, for sure, we're all hanging out here doing art, painting. And there are people from all over the world hanging out, like 450 people just hanging out with art. Just put that in perspective. It is about the coolest thing that I can think of. So hello, Perth, Australia. Thank you for joining us. On the statement, one of the things, this is, that is a statement, right? I think so. Parts of a flower. Pistol? Some. We, we teach art Pistol. not by... Not. <laughs> Whatever this part of the flower is, the sticky out, the sticky outy part, yep. you do want to make sure that there's a nice contrast between it and the flower around it. So I'm going to rinse this out, and for a second, I'm going to get a number four round. Right, your round. My number four round, and I'm going to go ahead and get some purple. I want to make sure that I really see and feel the difference between this and the flower that it's next to. I can use the purple on my number four round. Any round brush, you don't have to have my round. To make sure Grab a little highlight and I'll come in the center. We just want to make sure that that pistol has a nice pop from the background. Okay. Let's paint this one. All right. That's a nice one. Let's paint it. Let's paint it a lot. I'm going to take a little of my uh, cad red and magenta. Come back with some of my purple. And I'm going to come forward with my red. I'm going to blend it in there. See, I'm just blending those two in. And then wait, how do you lighten your red? A little red and yellow.
or red and magenta. We know I've got a little of this magenta and purple that we do on this shadow. Change the shadow just a bit. Get a little more right in there. A little darker value. Always add a little bit of shadow into a couple curls. That happen. Maybe a little edge there of shadow. And then we should add some of our, perhaps a little bit of our highlights. All right into this. Little bit of the yellow in there. It's just a dance, guys. Just dance in your petal. My pressure is super light, guys. See how light it is? It's a light pressure. It's not a heavy pressure. Next petal. It's like, oh, next petal. It's okay. So I've got my purple, a little white. I've got quinacridone. I have cad red and some yellow over here. I'm working with some cad red and quinacridone. It comes over here and it gets a little purple and white in it to help, you know, maybe start thinking about some shaded versions of the colors. The things that we have to be attentive to are things like value, how light or dark something is. And the hue, what color it is, and how we speak about those things in relationship to what we're painting. Might take a little bit of my Quinn and my CAD, and I'll come here and bring this back. Now I know I've got to pull a little edge over here from this flower, and that's okay. I'll put that back. Notice that my brush strokes, again, they're going the direction that the flower grows. Some pure CAD that I'm stroking back. I don't want to take this fully into a bright space. It's not fully bright. It has some, it has some darkness to it. And that's okay. So I'm going to come in. I've got a little purple CAD red and magenta. That's a nice way to make an interesting deep kind of color. And it's easy then to work purple into the space. Maybe talk about a couple little little edges there. See how they go? Mm -hmm. Step back. Look at your piece. Take a deep breath. Pay attention to your body positioning and how you're feeling. No, you don't want to hold yourself in a position where you're getting injured. Be sure to rinse out your brush. You know? Ooh, Australia has it. Hello, Queensland. Hmm? Queensland, Australia. Oh, Queensland, Australia. We had New Mexico earlier. I'm just like, you know. No, it's nice to see where everyone is painting with us from all over. That is always fun. I'm bringing a little bit of the red there. Now, out here on the outer edge, I might get a little of my CAD yellow. And I, I don't think I'm going to use my tie net. I don't. We'll see. I'll be surprised if I do, though. It's there if I want it. Sometimes I put it there to see if I want it. And I have a wet palette, so it doesn't really bother me because uh, the paint will save. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lose the paint. I'm taking a little bit of a highlight, and I'm highlighting a bit the outer edge of this. My pressure is light. I'm not really even blending it. I'm letting it sit on top of the leaf. I'm putting that out there into the world, making sure I've got a nice bright curl of it, right? Mm hmm The curve of the world. Kingston, Ontario. Hello. Woo! Fun stuff all over. 
you know, and you can always come in with a little add red. And where I want to, I can take little bits of this and just sort of pull it in to what's happening there. Look at that. That creates some wonderful drama. <gasps> to this leaf. To the leaf. This is the most fun leaf, so I'm saving it for last. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sip some coffee. Sip the coffee. Ah, coffee sipping. Do you love how these are going in, guys? Aren't they just, isn't this just lovely? Take a deep breath. <gasps> sippy, sippy. Now that this, don't breathe and sip at the same time. My sippy, sippy, my sippy, sippy. <sighs> just relax. You know, they're don't. really loving the red. It's popping. It just, you know, this does. It just pops and it's beautiful. It's fun to paint. It's fun to be in the painting. Some paintings are just fun to be in. It's okay if you want to spend a little time fussing with a leaf cause, or a petal because you're going to spend some more time with the petal. Finland. It's not going to harm you. Hi, Finland. Finland. <laughs> Finland. Oh, Finland. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were referring to me like what I was doing with the Finland, but no, or no. also <laughs> Finland is good. <laughs> I'm going to come here with some uh, a red and a little yellow. We're going to come on. The side there. Maybe get into my white, my peach. I just want to make sure that we see how this petal and this petal are not overlapping. And get into my quinacridone then. You can see it does kind of a neat color effect now again quinacridone i'm over here where the white was with the can what are we doing we are making sure that this part of the petal that bends over is kind of highlighted see how we did that here we go quite lovely quite lovely quite lovely I'll get back over into my magenta docks purple. And you have to remember, even though it's magenta and docks purple, there is cad red or different little micro mixes through this. This is why I do the mixing the 400 colors. So you understand there's 400 colors and there's really more. We just counted 403 swatches. But I could have done stuff all day. All day. I want this to be light here because I'm going to take advantage of this and paint this little bright shadow here. I think that added a lot to the painting and I didn't want to not have it be going on. So a little yellow there. Just so it's closer. So everyone's, you even have someone from France in here. Bonjour, ça va bien? Yeah. They think your hair is quite nice. Thank you. My I don't speak as much French as I can read or understand. Actually, John does much. Uh, of course, I took French in school and therefore got out with no French. <laughs> I mean, I can read a menu, like actually read a menu and, and get around uh, France de l'Econ Bonjour and all those things <laughs> and say hello and catch up on gossip and stuff like that. But it's it's been a minute since I've done conversational French. However, I remember my manners that I learned in French in France. The French have very good manners. They do. Because when you go into somebody's shop, you just don't come in and say, can I have this and this and this? You say, hello, how are you? How's it, your day going? It's very interesting. There's a conversational context that's yeah. required for a lot of different languages. Mm -hmm. um, I, was, I was reading about them. It's, I find it very humorous to see the overarching, you know, sort of, like, this is how Americans are. This is how the English are. This well, is I mean, how... Within I, the context of people are people. Right, right. No, but it's very interesting. Like the Austri like when it talked about the Australians and... We're just like, going pure CAD right here. So we've done some yellow and CAD through there. And we're going to come through with some pure CAD through here for a second. But of course, it's very tropey. Like, well, everything but, is tropey. Yeah, everything is tropey to a bit. But like, I felt like its reflection of me as an American was kind of accurate. Here's what I think. Here's what I think. I think that there are truisms about cultures. Sure. And those are fine in two conditions. And here's the two conditions. 
They do not diminish or disrespect the culture. True. That's not cool. Don't do that. And the other one is to recognize you're still going to have to meet every individual because just like there's an unusual person in your family, just like we all have variants across everything, you have to meet each person to know them. That's true. You can know that in France, you better be polite if you're going to ask for a stamp. You don't get to come up and be rude if you want a stamp, mm-hmm. right? That's, but there might be one guy who's like, he doesn't care. He's going to give you a stamp. I would suggest, though, if you're at the post office, that you say bonjour and you ask how people are doing and you say thank you when you're done if you want to re- consistently get stamps. But we should do that everywhere. We should do that everywhere. But I'm just saying, <laughs> like there we should things, just do that everywhere. There are things that you notice, and it's okay to notice things about each other. It's okay to see each other. It is okay to see differences. It's just not okay to diminish people because of differences. They should be celebrated. It should be cultural appreciation, not appropriation. Mm-hmm. I think all sorts of cool Cool yeah. So that's my that's my online internet things that I've learned in my life and over the years. And I think that when we're all done shaking out off off all the stuff and come to the middle road of all of it, it will be about seeing each other and appreciating each other and having differences be okay and having each other be respected for who we are. And remembering you're gonna have to meet everybody to know them because you cannot know the content of somebody's character by looking at them. Unfortunately, it will be through a series of experiences over time. Even me. I'm cute. I'm adorable. But you don't know me yet. Watch 1,500 videos. You'll know me better. <laughs> if you watch for five minutes, you'll find out you're here for 30. Yeah. That's our, that's our ship <laughs> trap. <laughs> you come in. You're like, what is this pink hair girl? I know, I know I give some like life advice, but I spend a lot of time thinking at the easel and I become a bit of a philosopher at the canvas. And I've learned some things. I've learned some things talking to people online and hearing people's stories. And I, and I see, I get to see inside. Uh, I think to a lot of experiences that different people have, and I get to see how, what we all share. And then also how we're all unique and special. You know what's cool about Canada? Everything. They get French as a second language. <laughs> all over the place. All over the place. I'm going to take a little quinacridone. And you know what Quebecois. else is cool about Canada? Make sure that Scott you see Pilgrim it all. versus the world. <laughs> it's also cool about Canada. Too much white there. I'm going to just get some. I don't know where I was going with that. Also, Canada has Tim Hortons, which just sort of wins. But we won't go into that too deep. I'm going to bring a little highlight here. So these are sort of like little little bits of sunlight that are catching the edges of things. I'll bring that on the lips of the petals. Just a couple of places. Got a little off my angle there. And no, I don't really, uh, sometimes people ask me, am I real stressed about cancel culture? No. Okay. No, because I don't have any weird old tweets and because consequences are not canceling people. So, I, <laughs> and everyone's... hopefully I'm not doing anything that requires consequences. Fingers crossed, knock on wood. So all the Canadians totally are like, Tim Ho. So, okay. So this no, was... I mean, who ca- who wouldn't be though? I'm taking a little my cad yellow over into my purple, and we're going to also now. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this in was a little a... bit of shadow right here on the edge of this. This was a totally funny thing. I want to okay. share. Share with me the funny thing, little cat, little magenta. In the... Share as I paint. Share. So, I think it was our oldest mm-hmm. had a genuine social studies question that was. Who eats more donuts? America, oh, Canada, yeah. like Wow, that was a debate in our house that weirdly was. popped up out of nowhere. And I was like, well, America, of course. But I was like, oh wait, is that per capita? Or is that I mean, because like Canada has Tim Hortons, which is like totally you unfair. You seem very serious about the Tim Hortons biz. I'm gonna but, fold up a little petal here. And if you go to the Netherlands, nah, you have Stroop like waffles. Do mind. Stroop waffles count as donuts? Because then that, I mean, all bets no, are No, Stroop waffles do not count as donuts. That is not canon of wa- That is not canon uh, no. of donuts. But there's, a, I mean, like, depending on where you go culturally in the world, there's like a lot of variation of donuts. I'm just saying that there's canon of donuts and um, <laughs> you have to respect the canon of the donuts. I'm, I'm just saying. I know what you're saying. I'm just but telling you. From so a we standpoint, do debate about these things. Uh, who, wh- wh- where where would you go to find the most donut consumption? Is it by raw donut or per capita? So these are good philosophical questions to ask ourselves while painting. Very important philosophical questions to ask ourselves while painting. All right, sorry. I and just, you should ask yourself philosophical questions while you're painting. You should. Clearly, that was an important thing I had to get out. Clearly. 
And I'm glad you did. I feel better for you. I'm going to add some pure CAD through here. Maybe a little bit right here. I ah, really love that pedal. Look at that. Mm -hmm. <sighs> for the person who's like, no, we don't have to know each other. But you do. And You're going to have to know each other. You're going to have to meet each other. It's the only way to get through it. We're going to have to talk to each other. We're going to have to get to know each other. And we're going to have to do it from a place of love and respect. But what about it's all just going to be what it's going to take. What about all the fried bread from the Korean street? We vendors? should share fried bread. But it's still not canon for donuts. I respect your street fried bread. I but it do. Been, okay, but see, here's the thing. But it's not In a donut. South Korea, a lot of the foods have like some Americanized twist to it. I'm just saying they have taken so things here, and elevated Here's where John has, you don't know this, but playing dirty pool here. And he's playing dirty pool. I haven't been to South Korea. I only watch South Korean rom-coms. And he has been to South Korea a whole bunch of times. He probably met my favorite rom-com stars, didn't even know it, didn't even care. Just like, are we bowling? And Whereas we're bowling I would be together. like losing my little American mind and probably scaring people half to death. They would be like, oh my gosh, this purple-haired auntie is freaking out on me. <laughs> <laughs> they would be awesome and also wholly terrible. But I am up for all forms of bubble tea. It's still I, not tea. This is canon, right? There's got to be canon for donuts. The history of donuts must have canon. All right. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to donut derail you. You but. donut derailed me. He did. Also, I'm enjoying taking in my petals. Aren't the you petals are enjoying taking in your petals? Don't you enjoy taking in your petals? That's right. So now I'm going to go in and get a little... Charles in white. Mexico and Spain. Mm, still not a donut. It's Charo. Churro. It's churro. I'm going to come here it's on the edge of this. goodness. It is what's well, super yummy. No one is, no one is denying the yummy. I'm just, I'm just saying I'm not sure it qualifies as donut. Yeah. I may have to check your mic batteries in a minute. I'm uh, not it, sure. Are they down? It was, no, it was just sort of did a little click, 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 click. And I wasn't sure if Why don't we mic, check them? I'll check them in a minute. I'll get, it's no big deal. Manning a few little veiny bits. Sometimes you got to add some veiny bits as you do. It's also nice to come along sometimes here, and I'm going to come very lightly on the edge of this, just making sure I have a little light head, edge on that pedal, and I'm bring that through. See how we're going? Take it serious, man. Don't take it seriously. Try to, try to take things seriously without taking them too seriously. It's going to be the only way to get through. Okay, I am... Going to add a little shadow right there. I mean, a little highlight right there because I feel like that little area needs it. And let's take a minute and really look at our, our hibiscus in all of its glory right now. I very much like the negative space that's uh, pulling up here. Um, it's still really present like it was in the reference when I was attracted to it. I'm loving the dynamic color. Oh, I'm loving the dynamic color. I'm very excited to finish this petal because then we'll have completed this step. <laughs> Which will be super exciting. Wonderful. So I hope you enjoy. I look at my hair. I hope you enjoy spending time with us and talking about these things. Uh, you'll find when you paint with artists, we all get together and we just talk about things. We do. Um, it's really interesting because in art, you get into everything. You talk about everything. And, and and you really have to think about it and how it impacts what you create visually. So I guess I'm a chatty person because of that. Chit chat. Chit chat. I get a little criticism from it on occasion, but mostly we get supported. So ha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ha. Ha. So what we'll do is we'll, do you want to take a, a quick break or are you okay? I could take a quick break and get a fresh cup of coffee and we can, no. hey, we're not at the end of this flower. So let's okay. take the break as we finish, when we finish that pedal. I can also send, I can also send out for coffee if you want. I am okay to keep going. Okay. I'll send out for coffee while you're going. You guys keep know going. Acrylic April is coming. That was just the break. <laughs> Come to Acrylic April. I need you. I need your support. Would you, you keep we painting. need about ten grand, ten thousand of you to just come through the whole program, <laughs> or every day. If ten thousand of you could show up every day or more, that would be great. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. We just need a bunch of people. A bunch of people. A grip of people. Let's finish this up, and you send out for coffee. Okay, I'll get you coffee. I'm gonna 
go over here. But I also Shh. don't mind making it and no, take okay. like it's if right. we need to they do it. They want I'm to okay. see. They want to watch you paint, not watch. Not me, watch make me make coffee. coffee. I'm gonna come in. I've got my little cat over here. Make a little shadow color that kind of comes on this Whoa. side of the petal. You working on that one up there? Yeah, I'm gonna work on this one up here. Okay, I'm gonna put you on up here so that you can watch that. I'm gonna get a little. Um, but I'm gonna do a lot of color mixes. Do they need to That's see okay. those go? The canvas. I've got the. Look at that, man. You can turn around and see in the screen. I've got them. Oh, you are set. So John can do a thing. I can do a thing. And you, you can, can watch. can do a thing. That's what, this is why we have robots and. Like, this is why we have robots? High, like, graphic cards of awesome sauce. Of that make cool things. Pictures Shading and pictures that through. And, pictures and then you can get right into your Had Red and Queen Magenta. Now, about this moment, I'm going to rinse out. <laughs> and we'll put out some more cadmium red. Cadmium red, cadmium red. Here is my cadmium red. Mm, sorry. So let's brighten this up here because it gets quite a bit brighter right there, doesn't it? So let's make it brighter. We'll start with just the red. Pulling it down. Oh, that's so nice, isn't it? Bring that there. Curl it, maybe. And then I can get into my yellow here and kind of brighten it up. Let's brighten up a little bit of that, that part of the leaf. You have a little area that's a little darker there. You know you like it. It's all good. Just enjoy the reds. Coming on into my magenta here. Pull a little bit of a magenta. Grab some white. Let's make a little highlight a couple places. Like let's say we highlight right there. You never know. Grab a little more white. Thinking about it. Thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. We're almost done with the step. That's so exciting. Isn't it kind of exciting when we almost get done with the step? I'm in there making that crazy purple color. I, that's why I made a video of like, this is my favorite purple because you got to know I do this. Otherwise, this could be really like alarming. Never seen it before. Let's stroke along there. Still, we're keeping that shadow. We're just softening the depth of it. We're just letting it be just a little less, right? And where you want it to be just a little more, like at the front curl of this, you can go like that. Right? And coming along here, I get right into my red. Right into my red. And I'm just bringing this. This is still that number eight cat's tongue. Hmm. This is one of those very few brushes. Sometimes I use very few brushes in a painting. They just happen. Sometimes you just get a, a painting that just doesn't require a lot of brushes. I might get a little yellow into here. You can always come back into your shadow color. And pull that into some of the folds of that petal. See how you do? It's just a beautiful flower, isn't it? It really is. So lovely. Who doesn't just love it? I love it. You love it. I love it. Mmm. A little bit of the orange there. More. I'm going to white into that and then say, oh, maybe just a couple places. Not everywhere. I might bring some of that, this color right here on this edge. I 
I need to. I can always get back into my... God, red. Oh, that's so nice. That's very nice. I'm super loving it. Last little touch. Put the little white over to that purple color we made from earlier. Come along here and... Quite lovely, and if I need to get a little more deep purple on it, I'll come in on the back side. Thank you. My own creamer to stir. You're the best daughter that anybody ever had, okay. ever. You're gonna take away. Well, you didn't open it. Once you, the one on my desk is open. <laughs> <laughs> that would be why. <laughs> if you hadn't hide. If so, I hadn't hijacked the creamer you, from earlier. That's right. If you hadn't hijacked the creamer to your desk, they probably would have. Done There's it in him. There's no more open creamer, so I have to get a close one. We, I hijacked it from earlier. We're having a lovely day. John, I think this is a step. This is a step? This is a step. We can photograph it, sip our coffee. Is breathe. it all dry? Do, we need, do you need to dry sip. it? Or is it okay? It's okay. Okay, so we'll just we'll just step this then. Step this. Step it, step it. Step it, step it. I'm fine. Things are fine. I'm not crazy. A little crazy, but. In the good kind of way. I'll give this to John. Pretty red flower. Everybody should paint a pretty red flower at least once in their life. It's all done. I'm good. She's like so sweet. She's like, wait here. Is the coffee to your taste, mother? Very lovely. <laughs> she's making an Easter bonnet today. So she's really putting up with me. Oh, take a deep breath. Breathe in a little self-acceptance and Breathe away a little self-recrimination. <sighs> Take a minute and ask yourself that question. Am I being tolerant of myself? Am I being kind to myself? These things are important. Now, I'm going to take a brush. You're going to take a brush. I'm going to take a, just any old brush and make it damp. And then I'm going to just make sure that my chalk lines have gone away. Oh, yeah. Good time to do that before we move on. Everything's dry enough to take it right now. If your painting is dry and doing this is lifting your painting. There is something wrong with your paint and you need to contact the manufacturer. I'm just saying because every once in a while I hear from people and at this point of the painting, if this is all dry, it should be stable enough to remove chalk lines. I am. And if you're having trouble, switch to kids chalkboard chalk. Because sometimes when we're new, we have trouble with our brush pressure. Okay. And I so, have a whole cup on. for that and shirt about think, being in the Goldilocks. I think zone. I had the wrong step up, so we'll restep. Okay, good. We get we'll restep. We'll restep. There, your step oh, seven paint for on hibiscus. The, paint on the monitor. <laughs> I was like, oh, what did I just do? Paint on the monitor. Okay. Checking now. <laughs> it looks like it's on the surface. So I made a mistake. It should did have you make seven. a mistake? Do, do, do. But there Forgiven. we go. Listen. Here's, a, here's another thing and all that. If you've made a mistake, you've learned from it, you've changed your behavior, don't forget the step where you forgive yourself for having been human. Please. And I mean, it can be a big mistake. Like a Xena warrior princess level of mistake. You've learned from it, change the core of who you are, forgive yourself along the way. It's, I think it's easy to ask for other people's forgiveness, but sometimes we don't give a chance to forgive ourselves. So there's a thing. So if John, I forgive you for your mistake. Do you forgive yourself? I guess so. I'm forgiven. Good, good model behavior. Yeah. Model good behavior. There we go. I do it. <laughs> he forgives himself. <laughs> so now what is, what are we green doing? Green leaves. What do we do? More green leaves? Mm -hmm. Just finally. We're going to finish the, those up. Finish the green leaves. Going to finish them up. I'm going to use my number four round. Okay. Maybe some fresh water. 
I'm going to come here and take a little bit of my green over to my yellow. A very bright color. Get yeah, myself a little stuck there and then. Oh, that's the green highlight that makes that stand up. Yeah, you need them. They're needed. Take a little bit of this light color too and maybe come here and. Don't forget your. Just add a little highlight there. We're just adding little highlights. A lot more yellow into it. Isn't that wonderful? I like that. Just creating a little drama on the stem, you know? Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to come up from the bottom with a little bit of my green and my burnt sienna. And I brushed out my highlight. I have to put it back so, in a second. Is it true that Acrylic April will be going up at 11 a.m. Eastern yes. Standard Time? Yes. YouTube thinks I should do it at noon, but I am going to end up doing it at 11. We may go uh, do some pre-show lives before to answer questions. Mm. Make sure you guys know where your materials, like your mini books, all that stuff is, because those will all be ready on the day of the videos. Making sure you have what you need. And then also if you had questions, those uh, lives won't stay up. They'll be temporary. And I just haven't decided if we're going to go from Facebook to YouTube or from YouTube to YouTube. I may, I may take those recordings and throw them up on like the Roku channel. Yeah. So that you guys could get access to them, but they won't be up on YouTube. Yeah. But yeah, we could put them on the Roku. That's a good idea. Maybe even on the Facebook. Yes. Facebook also. They're not punitive. <laughs> That's right. Here we go. So adding a little green to it. But I do think on a class like that, especially one where you guys are committing the time um, to come in every day and paint with me, I like to be available as a teacher to answer questions. I think it's important. Because I, I get that the anxiety can be so extreme. And then also sometimes it's just nice to have your teacher like answer a question. This leaf goes in front of that stem. Move it in front now. And I think I'll come here and kind of come in and brighten that up. Grab a little bit of my yellow. So what do you guys think about having some pre-show Q&A? I think that'd be pretty fun. Well, I know you do, but they have to. Want oh to yeah, do no, they're definitely. <laughs> they were like, now the pre-show is what we'll, won't we'll be. We won't leave that on YouTube. No, that'll go to Roku or Facebook or something. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll be able to find it. It just won't be hosted on YouTube because I don't know the way. It's, ugh, I won't even explain it all to you. It's just silly, but we have to work around it. Um, and but I'll be there. I'm going to try to be there most days. Um, not on my daughter's birthday. But on most days, I'll try to be live uh, before the show. <laughs> My daughter's birthday, though. And big hugs to all those in Australia, especially Annette, who's up at 6 a.m. 6 a.m. Thank you, Annette. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. And to Sandra, who is asking, if you are looking to find us on Roku, you go to your Roku channel ad thing. It says add a channel. And you just do, do a search for the Art Sherpa. And you'll see the Art Sherpa TV channel which you can install. And then you have all the videos. It's Most of better. them are videos you've probably already seen right now, but we'll probably be adding special content to the Roku channel at some point. 
That's what we're saying we're going to do. Because it lets us uh, experiment. Do some fun stuff. I'm adding highlights to these leaves. Creating some focus, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody needs a little focus. Almost done here. It's just a little bit of a, you know, you just paint along and kind of create a little definition. Look at this go. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. I think it's so fun for me. Now, a lot of yellow and green here. Because coming, the light coming through this leaf, you know, has to register like that. I mean, can you even go a little lighter on the tip there? So that's the light coming through that leaf. And you want to make sure that you're capturing those values, how light something is. That's a big, big factor in how your painting comes out. Hmm. Capturing those values where you need them. I like to put little pops of highlights to imply something got hit by the sun a little harder. Sometimes you get hit by the sun, right? Mm -hmm. So is everybody excited about finding the Roku channel? Or they're like, ah! Oh, yeah. Another place. Oops, I got to get the right camera control over there. Move the wrong that. camera. That's looking pretty good. All right, that's a step. That's a step? That's a step. All right. Looking pretty good in the neighborhood. Hmm? What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, why are you disturbing me? Why are you doing it over my space? What are you doing? My big red flower. <laughs> but yeah, I am going to, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll go over the mini books on, on the pre-show. My plan right now is to go over the mini books, um, answer questions from the previous day, um, kind of make it like a virtual classroom kind of a situation where you guys actually can get some real help. And no, it's not any extra money. It's free. Because, right. you know, buying materials and the fact that we've all been in lockdown for a year and everybody's kind of on budget. So you know, make sure that that's there for you so you can paint the stress away. <sighs> now, STEM. It, hmm? for those people who are like, I wish I had Roku, check your smart TV. Oftentimes yeah. they're, they have Roku built in. So. Um, and uh, it... it do we want to, we can host on the website too? Oh yeah, there'll be links on the website yeah. once we get all that going. So yeah, don't worry, we'll get that up there. So, and, and then the other thing is just be at the class live. That's true. Okay. That's okay. the easiest. Yeah, that's the easiest. The easiest is to be there. So sign up for the text notification. And actually, we won't have enough text for that month, will we? It's too many texts. Too many texts, John. Mm-hmm. It may be. It may be too many texts. That, that, is not, that has been known to happen. I'm going to take my number four round and get some purple loaded into it. And we're going to come here. And then I'm going to tap. I'm not going to draw a line because this is light. And light has a tendency to be a little diffused. But I'm kind of just talking about the curve that's here. And we're going to make the little st stamen that's here. Reflected on the leaf. I love this part, so I'm not skipping it. And there's a little more. It's a very regular little shape. Can you see how we're doing? Mm-hmm. He's answering Roku questions. I'm, I'm just answering lots of questions. <laughs> oh, they found us on Roku. Oh, good. So there's our little shadow on our flower. Always nice to have. And I'm going to come along the inside again of this stem. I'm going to get a little of my orange going, which is my cad red and my cad yellow. I'm 
exaggerate just a little bit of what is happening here. Trying to make sure that we can really see that as what it is. See it is what it is, what it is, what it is. All right. So I'm gonna take some of my magenta in my cad red and a little dox purple. Let's paint some little weird sticky out things. They have a purpose I'm sure don't know what it is <laughs> at all but I'm sure it does and then you can take a little bit of red and highlight them a bit I thought Arlene Arlene I thought Arlene she asked uh can we paint elves and I was like well if you can catch them you can but she was like no can we paint Elvis and I was like, oh, that's a different <laughs> no, kind of No, I don't think we can. Let me check on it. Um, his a... estate is still in uh, private ownership, so we may or may not be able to paint his likeness. We... Let me check on the likeness rights that are attached to his image. Because there's, a, like, on fair use, I might be able to. But we have... I'm a teacher, and, but I have but to see, check. The, the photographer has rights, and the estate has rights. Yeah, so if you want to know how you'd have to do that, the first thing I'd have to do is figure out exactly where they're holding the intellectual property for all this. And then I have to figure out where the likeness rights are versus my fair use. And then I would have to make sure that if I used references, I could not end up with a final painting that looked like anybody's photograph. It has to clearly, clearly be not that. Now, it's an interesting thing. I'm going to take my orange into my purple. I'm going to create a dark color. I'm going to put a little of these sticky out stems a few places. They're going to peek out. They're going to be here and there. These are going to put context to the weird little yellow things that are everywhere. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's that's a hard thing because sometimes I want to paint something like, dude, there's like no way for me to paint Nintendo. I have looked. Right? They are too aggressive in their intellectual property and fair use is a real problem to argue with them. Mm. You want to know more about these interesting topics? Watch Thunderfoot. <laughs> True, he's been into it. Although I can't say that we can endorse all things Thunderfoot. No, he we is, cannot endorse all things Thunderfoot. He is a controversial He's so controversial. Channel, but that is his purpose, is to push the edge of the conversational comfort zone. I'm going to make little dots with our weird purpley color. It is his purpose, to push the envelope. Of the, sometimes, sometimes the purpose uh, is to make us uncomfortable, and it is okay uh, to make us uncomfortable sometimes. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with the idea that mean speech is free speech, but... <laughs> You know, but that's me, and I choose my own behavior. That's true. And I am not the mom or in charge of others, though I act like it sometimes. <laughs> I'm adding these little dots. Do you see them go everywhere? I do. They're wonderful, aren't they? Fun day today. It is nice. And again. Painting will look good up close and far away. I'm hearing you guys are having, you know, some trouble with that out in the world. The painting's looking good close up and, you know, on your canvas like they do on the camera. So we're just making sure you guys know what's going on. I'm going to take a little of my yellow and red. Highlight the tops of some of these. These are not our only highlights, guys. A uh, three-step process. Hmm. Make sure that this is the wonderful, interesting flower structure that's... I mean, this is a big part of the hibiscus, let's be honest. This weird little dealio. Yeah. We care about the dealio.
Okay. Rinse out. Take a little of your CAD and a little of your white. Add highlights to a little lighter on the right side, but we're highlighting. You see the highlights going in? I do. Oh, that's so highlighty. Take some of the yellow. Let's trim that back. I don't want it quite. I want it there, but not quite so aggressive in that space. Maybe a little more. I'm going to step back and make sure. Step back and take a look at that. I'm going to look at that air as well. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. I think the... Shadow needs to go a little further across my leaf. A little further? I think it needs to come to about here. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Could extend a little bit. Oh, a little bit, yeah. But that's, you know, at this point, it's kind of like, you know, up to you and your own taste <laughs> to kind of, like, you know. I'm going to take a little purple and come here and come on the other side of this, just with a little fine line. Ooh. Maybe on the other side of this. Just a little bit to help these be separate of each other. And I think we're there, guys. Yeah. I, do. I think I feel so. like we got it. I think you nailed it. You can, you know, you can go through and you can keep playing with the petals and keep playing with the highlights. But I think, really, we have come to the end of our wonderful day together. I we do. Have. We've talked about things. We've learned stuff about ourselves. We've grown as people. And we've made a painting. I mean, where else are you going to do all that? <laughs> and I don't know. And remember, you've always got pause, fast forward, and rewind, <laughs> mute. So you're in control. You get, you know what? Hmm. How, you know how Bob used to say, you know, you're, you're in control of the canvas? You're also in control of me. And remember, you can always fast forward or mute or make this lesson work for you the way it's supposed to. We're going to work hard on those time, time stamps now and getting yep. that mini book done. Um, help you guys as you're painting this. If you want to share the painting with me, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Facebook, I have a group in the group on Facebook for uh, the Art Sherpa official. You can share Art Sherpa tutorials as many art stripper tutorials as you've done any day, any time. And we mm -hmm. even have special days for other stuff. I know it's a little bit of a groove to kind of learn the posting days and times, but we do try to make sure that you can also share some of the other things that you're working on. The in control, <laughs> in control days. Uh, thanks to everybody who joined Emoji Club today. I really appreciate it. Thank you to anyone who jumped to patronage today. I really appreciate it. Thank you to anyone who shared the video, liked the video, commented on the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Because if you think free art lessons are cool, that's the best way to find out when I'm doing one of those. Um, and really, there's nothing else to say, but I have to sign the painting. You sign the painting. And then after you sign the painting, uh, you can say goodbye to everybody. And then I'll do a quick little tour while they listen to some music and check out the painting. Does that seem reasonable? Seems so reasonable. We can do that. We have, we have robot skills. We do. And that way you can also see the painting as it is in its reality. Need a little more on that last letter. A little fady out.
All right. There we go. So, my friends, be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you in an easel really soon. Bye. Bye, guys.